Not your mouth. Out of your mind. Out of your mind. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Twitterific is officially discontinuing push notifications in real time streaming. They're making these cheetah robots that don't have any vision because they don't want them to rely and trust their visions. Just think of how many of the Amazon devices or Google devices have replaced timers, little gadgets and gadgets. I was absolutely floored to all the changes they've made in voice view. There are plenty of people who like the smaller form factor of the 13 inch screen. And I got the LG Slim Folio case, which it snaps in real good and it's a nice keyboard, really good to the touch. I like that, that's another hundred bucks. I decided on this Surface Go to jump in full force. I ended up getting the slightly more expensive one that has the double storage, the 128 gigs, yep. and then the eight gigs of RAM. And then I got a type keyboard for it as well. Because it sounds cool. Cluck and gobble. <laughs> Cluck and gobble. <laughs> Because if you really want to test the beta, you have got to put it through its paces in a real world environment. Mm -hmm. And you are not going to do that as hard as you try. You're not going to do that on a secondary device. I know, yeah. And I'm that forgettable, clearly. Three, two, one. Welcome back to yet another that blind tech show i'm here with the usual gang how you doing today allison i'm doing great it feels like i've been gone for a long time it was only one episode though but in the new house and definitely glad to be back yeah you were missed you were definitely oh, missed thanks. Uh, i missed you guys too you're welcome and of course mr jeff thompson back from the nfb conference in orlando florida how are you doing today jeff i'm doing great brian it's great to be back and you know once you've been in that hotel for that long you just get back and you get that air conditioner cough going <laughs> Oh, so, gosh. But it's hot everywhere, so I can't really complain. No, no, yeah, it's 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 actually really hot here in New York. Earlier today, I ran out to the pharmacy, and one of my prescriptions could not be filled. I said to the pharmacist, I actually had a smart thought in my daily living. I said, you probably know some pretty good doctors in the neighborhood. Could you suggest one to me? And she said, sure. Can I write it down for you? And I said, well, that doesn't really help me. And she said, well, what if when I write it, I press really hard? <laughs> Bless them, they do try. Against you or against the paper? You know, I didn't ask. I was assuming she meant against the paper, but... You could have got a date. You could have got a date out of it, though. <laughs> I think she was like a 70 or 80-year-old oh, Greek well, woman, you know. so... Yeah, but Allison, I am starting a campaign. I am now a sightist, which, you know, it's never good to be an ist, <laughs> but... Uh, oh, dear. I hate sighted. No, I don't hate sighted people, but why... How come at times sighted people could be so dumb and <laughs> clueless about what blindness it is, is it is how, it is worth it. i try to just have a chuckle <laughs> and uh because they really i think they really try just trying to because they don't understand how you know if they lost their vision tomorrow they would not know how to do anything at first well so. when i mention it at the theaters <laughs> they say hey we'll just move you to the front row <laughs> Oh. Yeah, I mean, this is a woman I've known for a few years. There was no malicious intent for it. And my first thought was, yeah. thank God I'm a comedian because that is going in the act somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely a place for it, yeah. <laughs> well, how about yourself there, Jeff? Has a sighted person said anything to you really stupid lately? <laughs> Um, I was just at a National Federation of the Blind convention. There's 2,500 blind people there, so I really didn't get the chance to run into the sighted people. <laughs> ah. But did you see any people who were blind at heart? I hate that, that phrase, by the way. <laughs> Actually, there were some people there that were really good. The UPS people that help and call out the elevator escalators. And then they had a whole bunch of uh, officers that worked at the hotel. They were on duty and stuff. And, you know, really great people because not only does it help me sometimes, but it helps the hundreds of people that are walking aimlessly around and guiding them. So the know? flow keeps yeah. moving. It was pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. Actually, I did have a weird interaction where somebody tried to give directions to my dog recently. And I said, no. <laughs> Ha ha ha! 
That's not going to work. That's not going to work. Sorry. Did they use dog language or did they speak English? <laughs> they spoke English. They're like, now you go down the street and you turn. Left. I'm like, what? I was like, no, no, no. You have to tell me. You have to tell me. You don't tell the dog. It's not going to work. They were like on the ground. Uh, I'm like, oh, my word. <laughs> we, we've just lost our one-sided listener. Yeah. You guys are mean. Mean to us. <laughs> No, we love you, sighted yes. people. We do. We do. Now, to refrain from making people tear their headsets off, I am not going to scream. I'm just going to explain it. Do you know what a tension breaker is? <laughs> it's when you scream out of your mind, and it's just had to be done. Okay. Not your mouth. Out of your mind. Out of your mind. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, this next story, if uh, anything ever needed a tension breaker, it would be the fact that Twitterific is officially discontinuing push notifications in real time streaming. The countdown clock is on, Allison. The panic has set in. What are your plans for Twitter? Oh, I don't know. I mean, okay, so it's not... I, I know that it's not the end of the world, but it is going to make Twitter less efficient to use. I hate the official Twitter app. I hate it with a burning passion of hatred that I simply cannot even quantify in words. That's how bad I hate it. Hmm. And I'm either going to have... If I really want push notifications, I'm going to have to just enable them on the app. So at least I'll have that. And for the streaming, I mean, I don't mind manually refreshing whatever. But it's going to break direct messages pretty badly. Because there's something where direct messages now, you can only send up to so many before they run into the thing where you have to target the developer. So direct messages are going to suck. I don't know. I, I, You know, I've been moving away from... I don't have a lot of time, you know, to keep checking Twitter it's the end as my of life the continues world to get busier. As we know it. So I just, <laughs> I'm worried about it, but I don't care. Like, it's like if I find myself using Twitter less, then so be it, because it's not always that. You have to wade through a lot of junk before you get to any of the good stuff anyway any, anymore with everybody. Are you talking about hashtag Yankees? <laughs> <laughs> well, I muted that. But it seems like every, like, I, I have this, uh, I want to keep all political stuff off of my main Twitter. And. I can't ever seem to do it. And I just, I don't care what anybody thinks about Donald Trump or any of it. I don't want to see it on my Twitter. I follow Twitter mainly for technology news and to keep up with the lives of my friends. And so trying to keep a lot of that muted has been very challenging. Yeah. How about yourself, Jeff? Uh, I know you do use the native Twitter app on the iPhone. Have you been using Twitterific on the Mac? What are your plans when D-Day comes on August 16th? Well, I really do use Twitterific on the Mac. I got you know 20 bucks invested there but that's not the big thing it just works really well for me when i'm posting podcasts and stuff and i get them to go up first thing i do is switch over to twitterific and it just works so seamless because you're just on one station it's all work i figured out a way to make it work and it works for me really good twitterific works great i do use the twitter app on the phone too because i've always used it before that i don't want two notifications two notifications coming in for everything so i won't miss it as much on the iphone but the thing is there's certain things on the iPhone you can't do with the Twitter main app that I could do with Twitterific. Sometimes you send links out and they're dead links on Twitter, but on Twitterific, they always work. Yeah. yeah, I'm a Twitterific user. It's my go-to app on the iPhone as well as on the Mac. In fact, I'm the iPhone. You know me, how I love my notifications, but I have them turned off in the native Twitter app because I get them all through Twitterific. So I don't know. I guess I'm going to be starting to take a look at the main Twitter app. Yeah, I know this is probably all ad and revenue based and Twitter trying to keep people using their platforms, but I think they've just gone too far. You know, you can't reverse it. There are so many fantastic other more accessible, fully accessible Twitter apps and, and this was a big disappointment and uh, you know we knew it was coming and I, I don't know enough about APIs to s understand why Twitter is doing this and everything. I know it would be a financial burden to Twitterific to continue. It's not their fault that Twitter's changing their API and it, it would change their business model completely. So this is a major disappointment which is why we kind of started off with a serious topic. We'll have to see, you know, maybe at the last minute something will change but as of now it's going to be interesting to see what happens on Twitter come August 16th. Now, Jeff Jeff, I make most of my important decisions not in the boardroom, but in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
So this next story was really interesting to me, that 10% of all consumers, according to a report, want voice control in the bathroom. What are your you thoughts know, about this? Because this is on the toilet, is that why you came to me first here? <laughs> I did. I figured... Start with up. one and then move to two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so you're saying I'm two? Hey, hey, I, hey. hey. <laughs> you relate to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Who does number two work for? Great. Uh, I great don't know. Scene. I, I really don't know why someone would even bring this article to the surface. I don't know. I really just, I'd shut the door. I don't know. Circling the drain. <laughs> yeah, it's still circling. Are you saying that we should have just flushed this story? <laughs> I, 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 you know, I would be interested in voice control in a public restroom because I'm one of those people, when you can't see things, I've gotten so good with using my foot in public restrooms to touch things, to feel my way around. And I'd be great to just say, hey, lady, flush the toilet before you leave the public restroom. That way you know people are flushing and everything. How about you, Allison? Do you want voice control in your new home bathroom? It would be handy because, you know, they talk about men's rooms being gross, but women's rooms are even grosser. So sometimes so i would love to just be able to not have to touch anything ever i want the door to be voice controlled i would like the toilet paper dispenser to just like pop out a sheet so all you have to do is touch the sheet i want everything to just be like i don't have to Mm. touch anything i use my foot sometimes but i hate getting my toes stuck in the zipper that's that's (laughs) the only setback for me it was scary Look at Jeff, man, bringing the A-game on the podcast. So, Allison, have you ever woken up in the middle of the night and had this recurring fearful dream nightmare that blind people are going to be replaced by cheetah robots? Well, I often wondered when the robot overlords came to live among us if they would, you know, kill blind people first. Yeah, I mean, cheetahs, well, they're they're a lot... Cheetahs are even faster than us with our guide dogs. I mean, we're pretty fast. Yeah, but. well, this this was an interesting story because yeah, I get it. They're, they're making these cheetah robots that don't have any vision because they don't want them to rely and trust their vision. So I felt it kind of interesting. You know, and they, these robots that they're, they're making uh, are going to be able to go into places like Chernobyl. I mean, who knew that place was still a disaster? But places that, you know, (laughs) humans can't go into and everything. What were your thoughts about blind cheetah robots, Jeff? Well, first of all, uh, cheetah, where do they get that from? Are they super fast? Is that why they're calling them cheetah robots? Or I don't know. I don't know if they're shaped. I, I, I also I could not see the like photos cheetah. with this article. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, they gotta up that revol- I had revolution. I no idea. Why cheetahs? Yeah. <laughs> I think if the real robots are gonna replace anything, it's gonna replace all humans, not just a selective group of them. I mean, yeah. First the blind, then Manhattan, right? Yeah. Yeah. At least we won't be alone in our death. Yeah. <laughs> no. So the cheetah uprising. I mean, I just thought that was interesting and i believe they're developing this at mit they seem to be doing a lot of interesting things uh, as far as ai out of mit and i hear you have to have fairly decent grades and have a big brain to go there they they also i know are working on a lot of technology for the blind at mit as well i don't think a cheetah robot is going to be leading us around anytime soon because it's blind too but uh, other technology they're working on there is pretty exciting i got a friend of mine and he's works at honeywell he used to work with 3d printers now he's at honeywell working with navigational devices Devices. He's an engineer, and he's been contacted by Uber and another company. And it's all for autonomous vehicles. They're really doing a surge in trying to find engineers to work on autonomous vehicles. Yeah, that's kind of like a robot itself, isn't it? It's not a cheetah robot. Though. <laughs> those robots, I'm hoping those rob- robots do have some vision. Because one thing I demand of all my Uber drivers is for them not to be blind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a non-negotiable thing. <laughs> yeah. Jeff, now this story I have to start with you obviously we mentioned you were down at the nfb conference what uh, was your experience like down there uh any great takeaways or anything you get to meet any interesting people one of the things i really well interesting people there's lots of them down there and it's really fun to just explore that type of aspect but when i went into the exhibit hall i noticed something really changed and this has been coming for the last year and i was down there last year and this year is the front entryway you walk in what are the first booths that you used to be able to see would be or find Jaws, Hunter Joyce, you know, VFO, all that, human wear. Those are the places you want to go, the Victor Stream or anything else coming out. You know, that's where you're migrated to. Even Hymns. Well, Hymns wasn't there. But in the front row, here's what you got. You got 
Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Ira, you got these companies and VFO and Humanware were right behind them, right on the side or behind them. It's like Walmart dropping into Green Acres, you know. <laughs> but how many, I remember Maxi Aids and Independent Living, those were big popular tables, four or five long because of gadgets and gadgets. But just think of how many of the Amazon devices or Google devices have replaced timers, little gadgets and gadgets. It's true. So slowly this is changing. Yep. And they're the big sponsors, so they're going to get the front row and all these other companies yep. like the guide dogs way in the back. You know, all this other stuff is way in the back competing yep. against the states who are selling crochet things and that's, stuff. Uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> I've noticed a massive change. Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day, and I really think I only have one blind specific product anymore and that is the new labeler i bought to label stuff where i can do voice memos and stuff so i know what things are which i'm planning on putting on all my clothes although the first run didn't go so well because as i anticipated the little stickers all came off in the laundry so i've got to find another oh, way to man. get these things to stay to close i only did like three or four of them just thinking they were going to yeah. come off but well that's a good laundry machine <laughs> yeah it got the sticker <laughs> off. It's doing its job. It's doing what it's supposed to. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I I just have a lot of mainstream products here. It, Same. You know, it's it's great that the mainstream companies are now making their presence felt at all these conferences and everything. What company was that? Oh, that made uh, which your stickers and that identification thing. Oh, I got it. I think it was technically through Maxi Aids, even though I got it through Amazon. I don't remember the name. Uh. You had to put me on the spot. We did mention the name of it on the last podcast, but. I don't have it in my notes and it's got a weird name. Yeah, so I got to figure out because it did say the product description was that this stuff could go through the wash. And obviously, I'm not doing something right. How odd. Now, Jeff, didn't you meet a fan of That Blind Tech Show at the NFB conference? Yes, I did. Actually, when I was there, I got a phone call up in the room and it was later at night. It was nine o'clock at night, and which is late sometimes. <laughs> and all of a sudden they said, uh, front desk, there's a Simon here for you. And I'm thinking, what's a Simon? It didn't register, you know, we have a Simon for you. Yeah, I, I thought it was a <laughs> cheetah robot named Simon or something. Well, anyways, <laughs> then he said his last name. And all of a sudden I was like, oh, wow. And I turned to Lori and I said, Simon's here, you know. Our kid, when Blindability's channel was on Audio Boom when we started out <laughs> this 12-year-old kid came on, and he was just a kid asking good questions and stuff. And I remember when he swore a couple of times, and we all pulled him aside, you know, and just said, you know, you can make a choice of what words you use. And then we all heard his voice break when his voice, it dropped like two octaves. Aww. It was like, the kid was gone. Well, we went down there. Him and his mom were there, and as we talked for an hour. They met with his mom the next day, and she was saying that all the community, not just me, the, but the community, and there was a lot of people. There was like over 200 people on that channel. And she was just saying what he learned there. Now he's in the tech stuff, and it's just really cool. And then he says, I listened to that blind tech show, and he started laughing a little bit, and I kind of looked over, and I kind of gave him that look like, don't tell your mom everything that we say on there. <laughs> <laughs> now, Allison, it was funny when Jeff told me this story initially, he said the way he phrased it was he, he said he just listened to that blind tech show. Well, I said, well, how did he use just because we have a lot of other great shows under blind abilities. Does he just listen to only that blind tech show or did he just listen to that blind tech show? Like five minutes ago. I, I got a little egotistical first thinking it was the first one, but I was mistaken. So You got egotistical, right? No, never. never, never, no. So never. thank you, Simon, for listening. <laughs> And, yeah, uh, thank you, Simon. Yeah, no, that's just a great story, Jeff. And uh, that's, that's a great thing, I guess, about going to those conferences. I avoid them. Allison, you weren't here the last show where I told the reason I avoid the conferences because something I might have said on that blind tech show might get me punched in the face, and I'm trying to avoid that. Oh, uh, boy. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> yeah, it was interesting. I dusted off the old Amazon 7-inch tablet that I got for 50 bucks, and mm -hmm. there was a big update to the software. and the, So it updates the software, and I was absolutely floored once it finished updating to all the changes they've made in voice view and if joe steinkamp was tweeting he would have been very angry because he would have wrote amazon just copied everything from ios and put it into their <laughs> voice view is now like voiceover and that's okay i'm totally okay. he is a great protector of the ios platform yes he is <laughs> yes he is i was so impressed i mean the two finger double tap is there the four finger tap at the top and bottom 
I'll tell you, Voice View has just made so many great enhancements that I went out and bought a 8-inch tablet because the 7-inch tablet only has mono stereo and the 8-inch has Dolby Digital. Yeah. So I did get the 8-inch. Uh, I was a little annoyed, though. The 8-inch arrived yesterday and it was a refurbished. It's pretty funny. I bought the 7-inch for 50 US. I got this one for 40 US, the bigger one, because uh-huh. of uh, Amazon Prime sale. But starting Voice View did not work out of the box and I tried and tried and I even did a Be My Eyes where they made sure I was on the right screen and I was and I had to get sighted assistance to to go into settings and set it up but I'm still playing around with it. The stereo is a little better. It's not, you know, earth shattering better but what are your thoughts, Allison, on the enhancements and improvements Voice View are making? I like it. I found that I was not using my Fire tablet as much, not because of the Voice View because I liked the changes that they've made but because I'm not into carrying around multiple devices so anytime I try to use a secondary device for something like reading or audiobook listening, I end up just stopping because I'm like, well, now I have to take my tablet and my phone. Yeah. It's different. If, it's different if it's something like the Surface Go, where you're using it as a computer as well. But for the Fire tablets, I, I still consider them to be more entertainment than productivity devices at this point. Yeah. Now, Jeff, you have a seven-inch Amazon tablet. Do you have you been using it, or do you too find? You really just stick in the iOS universe. Oh, let me put it this way. It's like if when you're in the pool, when you're in the shallow end, you can do lots of things. You can talk to people, you can cross your arms, you can lean up against something. When I turn on my Fire tablet, it's like I'm in the deep end trying to touch bottom and I can't do it. It's a lot more work and I've gotten to a point where I just like productivity. And I think when I have the Fire going, tell you what, it's exploring. But when I have my iOS and I just got the new iPad, I just keep on moving just like I do with my iPhone, you know. The iPhone is the big thing for me because I can do everything there. I don't need the iPad. I don't need the Fire. But I do like to have them because I like to break things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what I, you know... If you're out there and you've been wanting to get an iPad, but the price is an issue, I would definitely highly recommend either the 8-inch or the 10-inch. Stay away from the 7-inch. I mean, I could barely even, with the mono speaker and air conditioning on, I could barely hear the tablet. With the eight, the, the sound, it's like I said, it's nowhere near as good as the iPad. Or the best sound I've ever gotten out of any device is the speaker on the iPhone 8 Plus. I mean, that speaker is just incredible. You're speaking words of wisdom there because what you get, you got yours for around 50 bucks, right? Uh, I got the 8-inch on sale for 40 bucks, refurbished. Though. Okay, I just got the new one. That's the new one that came out, uh, I think it was end of last year, mm-hmm. November. The new iPad, right? Right, the new iPad. Starts at 329 for 32 gigabytes, which is nothing nowadays. Mm-hmm. I got the 128, so when I got it up, it was about 429 Then I got the LG Slim Folio case, which it snaps in real good, and it's a nice keyboard, really good to the touch. I like that. That's another 100 bucks. So 429 529 plus tax, plus you throw on another $69 onto Apple Care. Yeah, you're up near 600 bucks. Yeah, huge difference in price, yeah. And the great thing about having these tablets is anytime my iPhone or iPad angers me, I can now put them down, take one of these Amazon tablets and fling it across the room because they're so cheap to replace. So no, I, so I have the 7-inch, which I don't know if I'll ever even turn on again. Like I said, price level, very impressed uh, with Voice View. Uh, if price is uh, of concern to you, would definitely highly recommend. And especially this podcast will probably come out after Prime Day, but maybe on Prime Day, these things will be even uh, dropped even further in price. And I'm waiting. Oh, they're going to have crazy sales. Oh, that's, yeah. that's why I didn't get a key keyboard yet. And this is the funny thing. Ever since Mac Alley discontinued the great keyboard I had, I can't find a keyboard that'll connect to five or more devices. I have like seven devices I want connected to one keyboard. Everything is just for three uh, for some reason. So if you know of a keyboard that's out there on the market, email us in and let me know about it at thatblindtechshow at gmail.com or just tweet us in at blindtechshow. Brian? <laughs> yes. Okay. A keyboard and you want to switch to seven different devices apple tv fire tv iphone 8 plus ipad my amazon tablet my computer that's six and maybe my iphone six still you know because that's where i'm running the beta so that's seven devices yeah i used to have remote bloat now i've got just 
device craziness. Yesterday I decided it was update day because I hadn't updated a lot of my devices to the latest software 11.41. And I, so of course I did that and then I got a phone call while all the devices were turned on. It was oh, it rang man. across four or five devices. It was pretty. <laughs> and it's funny because the two iPhones have different ringtones. I was like, oh, well, that's odd. <laughs> so it was it was pretty humorous. It could be a little hectic if you're updating everything at the same time and you've got everything turned on. And now something that I may have to look into because I'm hearing there's great changes. Chromevox supposedly has made a lot of changes. Now, here's the problem. I went to go install Chromevox in Chrome on my Mac, and I could not get it to install. So it wasn't a good start. I wanted to test it first because I know these, these Chromebooks are so cheap and everything. Allison, have you ever played around with a Chromebook? I have one somewhere. It's nice. I think they've updated the OS pretty significantly and the accessibility features so that now navigation with the screen reader is even better. And they're coming out with a Chrome tablet that I was thinking about checking out at some point, but I haven't bothered yet. Yeah, so change that to a keyboard that could connect to 10 devices at once. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I know Chromebox started out initially only as, you know, working in Chrome, but now supposedly it works through the entire platform. The, my issue is on the Mac, and it says it's installed, but it doesn't seem to work, and I can't seem to find... I've got to spend more time looking into hmm, this. Interesting. I find that Chrome works so well, you know, on Mac and Windows now with existing screen readers that I just haven't bothered. I just wanted to test it out and, yeah. and see how the commands, you know... I mean, you can pick up one of these Chromebooks for like a little over 100 bucks. Yeah, that's what I How did. about yourself, Jeff? Have you ever played around with a Chromebook or Chromevox on the Mac? Down at the NFB convention, Google was there, and I went over and checked out their devices and... I noticed the way it was laid out. Their booth is laid out for sighted people. How odd. <laughs> At a blindness well, convention. Well, because you could walk up to the place, and as soon as you got one or two people in there, no one else could come in. You know, like most of the time you see the booths and tables where people face you. Here they kind of trap you in, and then they give you a hands-on. And once someone's in there, they're in there for 20, 25 minutes. So it, it was odd. So I'm hearing you didn't get to ask Google why do their applications suck so bad on the Mac? No, actually, <laughs> yeah, it's... A, if Google is iffy on the, the Mac or the iPhone. You know, they were talking about the, the Vox, you know, and that's a screen reader. But the thing for me is they didn't have a person. They had the one person that knew that stuff. Then they had the one person that knew this stuff. So it wasn't like across the board. They didn't bring the whole A team. They only brought a person for this area, a person for the Google Home, a person for this. And then Microsoft, too, was over there and they had the one person. They're not blindness companies, but they're in the accessible. Now, the Amazon guy, he was really good because that's his department, you know, Peter Corn. Yeah, no, Peter Cook. Uh, is his name Peter Cook? Corn. Peter with Corn. A, with a K. Yeah, yeah. Cook, he's cook fabulous. A cook a can, thing of corn. Uh, <laughs> Peter Corn, let's get these refurbished devices working out of the box. That's the only thing I've seen. But he's done amazing things since he's been there. And who knows, maybe I got the one device that had an issue or something. But uh, yeah. Lab 126. By the way, Jeff had a great podcast interview with Peter and I almost fell out of my chair laughing Allison because Peter says he had the same exact TV that I got and he says they had to run to Best Buy and get a new one because when it got there the screen was cracked and how odd I got one where the screen uh, was cracked. <laughs> when I got my Element TV I was afraid that was going to happen because when I read the reviews a lot of people were saying they got it with a broken screen but mine was fine. They must not pack them well. I mean it's it's just they really don't, bizarre. They don't. It's in like a cardboard box. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. That's it. Yeah, so it was it, this little thin TV. It I got mine swapped screen. out yeah. uh, very quickly. But Allison, like you, I too am very excited about this Surface Go tablet for four hundred bucks. Yes. Have you used a Surface Pro before? Or no? I have not, but I decided on this Surface Go to jump in full force. I ended up getting the slightly more expensive one that has the double storage, the one twenty eight gigs, yeah, yeah, and then the eight gigs of RAM, and then I got a Type keyboard for it as well so that I can just you know, hook it up and use it like I would the smart keyboard on the iPad, I assume. But I'm interested because it runs full on Windows 10. I'll be able to put JAWS on it and NVDA. Now that's a different mode you do have to switch to. I did read to, to run full Windows, you need to switch the mode or something. Are you worried about it not being fast enough or anything? Or you think it'll run all the screen readers okay? I think 8 gigs of RAM, you know, and the processor seems new enough. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Be interested to see where you've read that about switching modes because I want to figure out how. Well, there's two modes. There's, I guess, kind of an RT. I don't, I don't know if it's still called RT mode. I did read that because I haven't touched a Windows computer since I've touched a woman more what, recently what than it, a Windows computer. 
<laughs> wow. Is RT really tough mode? <laughs> really tough. It's the tablet mode. It's like the little dumbed down Windows sort of more mobile mode that only runs narrator and a co- oh, and, okay. and specific apps for I think ARM processors. I thought it was ridiculously. And X80 X86 mode is the mode that lets you run full on applications. Now we're just getting all technical. Yes. So <laughs> what? Uh, so you pre-ordered this already? I pre-ordered it today. They say they will ship August second. So I'll see when I get it. That's awesome. Yeah. So maybe I'll wait and let you be the guinea pig. Oh, it's okay. (laughs) So you got to pick your keyboard. Yeah. Hey, Jeff, you know, you can pick your keyboard. You could pick your friends, but you can't pick your friend's keyboard. (laughs) (laughs) I think there's a t-shirt that says that, Brian. (laughs) I I, I believe so. I I believe so. I I think the back of the t-shirt says keep on trucking. Are you interested in uh, checking out this Surface, Jeff? Uh, my wife has one from work, and she brought it home. And this is from a couple years ago. I don't think hers had a separate keyboard. Is that right? Or does the Surface always have a separate keyboard? You can get it as an optional accessory. Okay. Hers from work, and you know how work is. They figure it out, and then they ask later. She had a problem with some of the keys, like the insert key or the F12 key. Some of the keys weren't there that you use for JAWS and stuff, so it was complicated for her. Did her guide dog eat them? Mm, <laughs> don't know. He's pretty well behaved. He's a guide dog. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I, I just got to throw this out for the NFB convention. The guide dogs there, they were all perfect. I, I, I really Aww. noticed at this time, they were all really good. Now, there are some owners that were miserable, and I didn't care for them. But the guide dogs were just, you know, I think I've fallen in love with guide dogs in a sense because I'm around them all the time. But I don't have one myself. But, you know, really nice, really Aww. well behaved. Good dog. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. That's yeah. great to hear. So uh, it's fun, so funny. You know, when we started doing this podcast uh, eight nine months ago, you know, we always had the segment "What's pissing off Brian." But since February, the the world it's just paying me back for fifteen years of misery. And we are having a segment. It's so nice when companies just get accessibility right from the get go. And I recently switched credit cards from a crappy credit card company that had no idea about accessibility to Chase. And I just went in to pay my first bill, and I had to set everything up. And it took me less than three minutes to set everything up. And I even tweeted Chase and got a response just thanking them for how... I mean, to go from something that was, you know, very poor accessibility to something that's fully accessible. I mean, it's just so great when companies get it right. And I was very blown away with, uh, impressed uh, with uh, Chase's app and everything. And also, I'm getting points back for Amazon for everything I buy. Oh, so. you got your Amazon? I got the Amazon Rewards Visa as well, so you got, you were able to just, yeah. you were able to make a new account and everything right in the app, a new online account. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you have great. that card too. Yeah, I just got the app it. Is yeah, five percent, five percent points back, man. I I'm gonna make some money on that because I buy every we buy everything off of Amazon. No. Can you explain to the listeners what you're talking about here? I heard that if you acquire these points and then you have like Amazon cash. Yes, that's essentially what it is. You have points then that you can apply to purchases. Yeah, I think it's once you pay your bill, your yeah, points then arrive your points and everything. Get cause, arrive. Yeah, yeah. Get, these are like air miles or fly miles or whatever. Basically, except you can except you can actually use them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Before they change the rules. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, did you get the $70 gift certificate for yeah, just Yeah, it was a cool because I had something I needed to buy that was like $30, so I got the card, then I got that for free because I had the gift card, then I was able to get a couple of other free things, so it worked out really nicely. Same thing, I actually got Nash uh, raised uh, because of some of his health issues. They thought he should be eating out of a more raised bowl and water, and I got him that, and Aww. then I was able to get a couple of other things as well and everything. So uh, I'm very happy, like I said, with the Chase Visa card and, and the app for chase on ios i have not checked their website because i have no need to no if you got the app why why bother <laughs> yeah yeah so and it, it's great setting up touch id everything was uh the whole setup process was just an absolute delight you know you always worried oh here's a button here or you get to the end and there the submit or make payment button doesn't work or yeah. something and uh, it was just great for them to get it right on the last show allison we you weren't here but jeff and i talked about a new app called chirp and Jeff, did you get out and you were going to secure some other names and everything, like Bark and everything? Did you happen to secure those names for other Twitter names? It was 
Cluck and gobble. <laughs> oh, cluck and gobble. <laughs> Bark. What does the chicken do? Bark. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, have you uh, copyrighted those names? Uh, you may have beat me to it because I still haven't. I thought I'd get it combined because it sounds cool. Cluck and gobble. <laughs> cluck and gobble. <laughs> cluck and gobble. Well, Allison, Chirp, it's an app uh, for the Apple Watch for Twitter, obviously. Oh, and unfortunately, when I first installed it, it didn't work with voiceover at all. Now, interestingly enough, it's a 16-year-old kid out of Australia oh, that uh, cool. d- designed this. And I had reached out to him and he got back and I am now part of the beta team and he's building voiceover accessibility into the app. Advocacy at work. Very good. Yeah. So I just wanted to let the listeners know, reach out to developers. Be nice until it's time not to be nice. Even if they are minors, Brian. Yeah, that was my one thing. I'm like, great, now I'm exchanging pleasantries with a 16-year-old. I've always wanted to be an international criminal, so uh, no. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) Yes, yes. Death by war tribunal. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, this is pretty cool. So uh, hopefully you'll see good things coming to Chirp. Because I was never able to get, although I did read their discontinuing Twitterific for the Apple Watch, I was never able to get it to work properly. I did get tweetings to work every now and then. But I'm excited to start testing out Chirp and everything. Cool. I'll be starting that probably sometime tonight and everything. Another great story. I know Allison's not in the blind ability. Yahoo Fantasy Football League, which we've got coming up. We may be starting a second league, so if you're interested in joining, email us in. There have been some people, we don't know for sure if we're going to start a second league, but if there's enough interest and you want to get in, uh, email us at thatblindtechshow at gmail.com and let us know you're interested in getting in the league. And I've had a relationship with Yahoo Fantasy for going on about four or five years now and interestingly enough this was pretty cool because i went from just offering them feedback about what wasn't working with voiceover and they'd fix it and now allison uh, i'm doing contract work for them so they're bringing Ooh, me on board very cool congratulations yeah so they're there's they're, i got in touch and i did a, a screen recording and finally they got back to me and said why aren't you a preferred user and getting paid for all the work you're doing i said i have no idea why nice what about back pay <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you took that relationship to the next level, Brian. Yeah, now you've made it official. You've made Yahoo an honest tech company. Interestingly, <laughs> and got, what got even, dun, well, we dun, went even dun. further with it where uh, they reached out to me and said, hey, are you interested in working for us? And I go and they sent me this job description, a great job description. I'm really impressed that Yahoo and Verizon, it's another company. Uh, I think they have a merged company name. They're hiring like a director of accessibility and they sent me the job info. And then I look at the job Ooh. and I'm like, I really don't want to move to Silicon Valley. <laughs> you don't want to pay like $2 million for a house? No. Why ever not? No, because I could pay that for an apartment, a uh, studio apartment in New York City. <laughs> So anyway, it's just nice to be thought of and everything. And That's awesome. Yeah. So, but it's just great to see that companies like Yahoo are really this committed to accessibility and uh, they're just really doing a lot of great things. And that was a concern. I was concerned that when Verizon bought them that they, because Verizon's payment system for their cable is not exactly very well designed and everything. So it's, everything's still going mm-hmm. in the right direction, which is great to see. Yeah. That's great. Verizon has cable? They do. I they do, yes. Or uh, is, it the, is it the Fios, the TV? Fios, with, and... Uh, and I don't know what their TV is. It's some sort of dish thing. I, I hear they, they may have also dabbled in phones. I'm not sure. Somebody can look that up and let us know. You might, yeah. Can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me now? Oh, that was that, <laughs> Good. right? Now, Allison, you are running the iOS beta and we're going to break all non-disclosure oh, yeah. agreements and just talk Oh yeah, because about... there is one bug that is pissing me off. Oh, really? My goodness. What is it? Where I, I hit the button to find out what time it is, the sleep-wake button, or I tap my screen on my iPhone 10, and it just says locked. It does not say the time on the lock screen anymore. It is such a pain to figure out what time it is now because I have to unlock the phone completely and then I can check the status line or I have to ask Siri, which only works half the time, or I have to ask one of my various A people that are scattered around. So what you're really saying is Apple figured out a way to make time stand still. Yes. 
Yes. Impressive, Jeff. Jeff is just on tonight. (laughs) (laughs) I've been running the beta, and I don't use it that much because it's on my iPhone 6, which is screwed up. And here's the funny thing. Every time I go to update it to the latest beta update, it bricks the phone, and I actually have to hook it up to my laptop and launch iTunes and finish doing the update that way. So I'm not sure how much longer I'm Uh going to be doing this. Yeah. It just takes time and everything. I've I've thought the beta's been pretty good for the most part, though, you know, and I I haven't played around with it a ton, but the phone seems very responsive for a broken phone that I have it installed on. You know, again, I wouldn't suggest if you only have one device installing the beta on that, but you did say you're running it on your 10. Yes, but here's the thing. Okay, I'm going to offer a counter argument to that because if you really want to test the beta you have got to put it through its paces in a real world environment mm-hmm. and you are not going to do that as hard as you try you're not going to do that on a secondary device no That's true so if too. you so if you know what you're doing and if you can live with some bugs and understand that nothing's going to work perfectly and if you can handle being a little pissed off every time you push your sleep wake button to check the time and realize it doesn't work then i think that if you are a power user who is okay with a bit of instability then absolutely put it on your main device but do it at your own risk and back up allison i would highly say suggest picking up a couple of Amazon 7-inch tablets. That way you can set your tenant phone down and fling those tablets across the room. (laughs) I mentioned this on the last podcast, but I got to hand it to you, Allison. You guys are going in deep with it. And this is the first time I didn't put the beta, the 12 on. I'm, I'm still on the 11. And you guys dig in there and i listen to it on the the whatsapp and you know it's nice to hear that you guys are doing it but the thing that you guys are doing you're sending the information to apple themselves the accessibility exactly. team. exactly that's yep. the key thing i gotta hand it to you what you guys are doing and thanks for doing that what did one apple employee yell to the other apple employee what did they yell we just got more complaints from those damn blind people <laughs> <laughs> Most overheard phrase at Apple headquarters. Ever, yes. <laughs> yeah. No, that's great. All the people that do the testing, uh, that's great and everything. I am still the cowardly lion and just running it on my 6 instead of the 8 plus. It's a pretty good beta. I'm running it on my Mac. I take the chance there, but I couldn't do my whole operation. I couldn't shut it all down if there was a big glitch. That would be devastating. I'd have to go out and buy that new Mac that they just came out with, MacBook Pros, the 13 and 15 inch. Jeff, if it, uh, if it all shut you down, we'd be saying, can you hear me now? <laughs> Back to Verizon. <laughs> yeah. Did you need, any of you uh, take a look at the new MacBook Pros that so come out? I have completely missed that, so tell me about these. It's very interesting because they're coming out with the i9 and it's a quad six processor. Oh. They say the, the 15 inch is going to be 70 times faster and the 13 inch will be like two and a half times faster the 15 inch will be able to go up to 32 gigabytes ram and you can build on it so it starts out right around that 2300 mark you know for the Mm -hmm. 15 inch and by the time i had fun by going through and clicking all the options like it's 400 bucks to bring it the half a terabyte to a Mm -hmm. terabyte and then it's another 400 bucks to go up so it starts going up so for about 1200 dollars, you can get two terabytes and then if you bring up your to 32 bit that costs you another chunk i was up to about forty three hundred dollars wow so you can't do the 32 gigs in the in the 13 inch model that would be so nice so it just came out today you can go to the apple store and you can go down and say select this one then you can go down and put all the candy on that you want and it was just kind of interesting to see how fast but does the 13 also go to 32 gigs of the ram or 13 just i believe it goes to six but I can't be for sure because I didn't go through that process. Yeah, that's really limiting if so. Because there are plenty of people who like the smaller form factor of the 13-inch screen who still want I think the 13-inch, the the, you can only go to 2 terabytes memory where the 15-inch, you can go to 4. But, you know, this is going out on wow. the podcast. So this is just what I remember. I was just going through a list. <laughs> and it was just interesting to see how fast. I mean, for a you know a laptop. I mean, yeah, that's wow. insane. Yeah, that's a lot. You know, it's interesting because they just today that we're recording this killed off what a lot of the so-called experts call the best laptop ever made. And Jeff has that laptop. The uh, what was it? The uh, 2015. Yeah, MacBook Pro from 2015. 15 inch. I am a Mac Air fan. I yeah. did not see any updates to the Mac Air today. Um, I'm still running a 2012 Mac Air running Sierra because High Sierra is so awful, and it still runs great. 
I'm pretty happy with it. So I don't see a MacBook Pro uh, in my future, but maybe, you know, if they ever do update the Mac Airs, I still think the Mac Air is the best computer I've ever owned. And uh, It's a good computer. Yeah, I think the, the Surface uh, is probably my next big investment. So, like I said, start playing around in the Windows environments and everything. I'll get my Surface Go, and then you'll say, Surface, whoa, and then you'll get it. <laughs> yeah, I've been just buying product after product, and sometimes user error is <laughs> can make you look pretty stupid. Oh, dear. Like, kind of like that chair. Hey, yeah. it's on my list for Prime Day, Jeff. Uh, new computer <laughs> chair. So, sorry, I moved, you know. I'm getting uh, what we call, what, what's known in the industry as podcast ass. You know, oh, your oh, butt starts hurting because oh, oh. you've been sitting for oh, so oh. long. <laughs> it's just to lather you in Crisco and then put also you in Also known chair. as PA. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> By the way, Bape has yet to... You know what Bape is, Is it Allison? like vaping only? Was it bad? No. No, it's the Blind Abilities Podcast Empire. <laughs> oh, bape. It doesn't sound very imperial when you call it Bape, just oh, so you know. No. Serena gave us that. Serena had uh, millenna- it's Serena cute, but it's millennialized not, it's not very it. imperial. <laughs> no, I like it, Bape. Brian likes it. I, I like I it know. too. I do. Yeah. It's nice. I just don't know on the Twitter. Do I have to put periods between every letter or is it just at Bape? <laughs> you do hashtag Bape. Bape, man. Yeah. Well, with uh, the new Amazon Fire TV Toshiba 43-inch model, I was having a couple of issues that a lot of them self-corrected. You know, it was weird. It was having some static on the HDMI through the speakers that were cracking, but it just seemed to went away, and it happened on both TVs. The first one with the cracked screen, which I had for three days. <laughs> so it definitely wasn't that, but I had, all of a sudden, my TiVo completely went out, oh. and yes, I know, Jeff likes to say, Brian, what are you living in 1995? And I am the one TiVo user still, but I know the layout in my head because I Brian, can see it, and it the 90s yes. are calling they want their TiVo back <laughs> <laughs> cool is Beverly Hills 90210 the original on tonight it comes so, uh, comes preloaded go yeah. order yours today <laughs> hey so well, anyway on my TiVo it just stopped working so I called TiVo up and explained to them what happened and they said they could send me a replacement TiVo for $149 Ooh. I said try again they come back $79. I said, try again. They said, we could send it for you, to you for free. You just need to pay for it, then send the one back you have, and we'll reimburse your money. So I was very happy about that. So I went to unplug the TiVo, and I had checked all the cords and everything mm-hmm. on the TiVo. And I, you know, I have 4,000 things plugged in over yeah. here. So I had to follow the cord. And when I got to the end of the power cord, the one thing I hadn't checked, it was a little unplugged from the oh. search. <laughs> So I basically got a replacement TiVo for one that was unplugged. Yeah, that was the one thing I didn't check. (laughs) So you didn't immediately uh, call them back and say, no, it's not broken? Oh, I did. You're I, a I, of terrible did. person, Brian Fischler. <laughs> hopefully, TiVo. Hopefully, TiVo does not listen to our <laughs> podcast because I did call them back and s- I wanted to see if they could stop the shipment because I wanted my money back. And I, of course, did not say it was used. I just, I the thing just magically started working. Uh, again. <laughs> oh, I thought you said you didn't call them back. You did. Okay, good. No, good, I, did. Good. I did. You I did, did, did the right thing. Then you are not a terrible person. I just looked up TiVo on the <laughs> internet and the CEO. He's wearing a t-shirt that says Bape. I think he listens. Bape? Bape. Oh, great. He it's just resigned. Me. I like well, the Bape. Actually, yeah. Jeff, was that the CEO that just resigned last week, or is it the new CEO? Ooh, CEOs are dropping left and right. Yeah. So, know, right? Anyhow, moral to the story, check if things are plugged in, if something's not working. It was a hassle to, you know, follow the whole cord and everything, but Mm. luckily I got all my shows back and everything. Unfortunately, for some reason in this day and age, once something gets into FedEx's hands, there's no going back. Mm. So they could, Mm -hmm. they could, they could track the delivery, tell where it was, tell exactly, but they couldn't stop it. There was no stopping it. And if anybody can find me a wireless extension cord, just look me up. You can find us on That Blind Tech Show. That'd be... Uh, what was that? I can't remember we're the at email. Blind Tech Show. Jeff, don't you even know the oh. name of the show we're on? That's normally me that gets the show name wrong. <laughs> but, oh, man. Uh, another product that I got, Allison, and this is really cool, SanDisk, their wireless connect drive. And the reason this is so cool is... 
you could it plugs in USB into your computer so you could put all your files on it and I wanted mm-hmm. my blind mice files where I could use cross device yeah. whether it's with the Fire TV or just you know whatever and it then connects with the iPhone app well they just recently updated the iPhone app and I blasted them on Twitter because it's completely inaccessible you get this screen now I did figure out a workaround after I blasted them on Twitter but it still needs mm-hmm. to be fixed and I yeah. I did file a report with SanDisk I was on the phone with them and they're supposed getting back to me maybe in the fall of 95 because you know (laughs) but anyway uh if you do get this it does work there's just a a workaround you're gonna have to do when you first get it it says your drive is now connected it it, it connects over its own self wi-fi network so you're not on your wi-fi so it will work on planes and stuff Mm -hmm. but you get this welcome screen that says your drive is connected and it has one of those you know page one of four Mm -hmm. you swipe through all four pages everything says the same thing but after that there's no way to get to the drive Uh so we all know sometimes if you toggle voiceover off and tap on the screen that will then self-correct and get you going well that didn't work right I just decided, I said, let me turn voiceover off and flick from right to left with one finger, then turn voiceover back on. Got me to another page of stuff. Anyways, if I did that four times, I eventually got to the drive and all my content. So it's a little tricky thing that hopefully they'll get fixed, but because it is annoying, uh, but it only seems to happen that first time you connect to the drive. So now when I do connect the drive, uh, and I'm pretty happy with this product. It's like I said, the SanDisk Wireless Connect, and I got 128 gig drive i think it was 110 and i got it for 50 on sale so uh Ooh, very yeah cool. i would highly recommend this now this podcast will come out after prime day most likely which is the 16th allison what do you have on your goodies list if anything for prime day a desk chair i don't know because i buy everything when i need it Maybe I'm a one percenter in that way, but so when Prime Day comes around, I'm like, well, I can't really think of anything that I want and or need, so I don't know. <laughs> what a, I've got a list of like 15 things, keyboards and memory storage slots from stuff, you know, to put a memory card in, in a uh, desk chair. And here's the most important one, though. Uh, headphones for sleeping, because they now make those and everything. And Jeff, you'll love this, because I know you love making fun of me and my TiVo. So I could use the TiVo app on my iPhone and play content, because I don't need to see the screen. And it's got a great speaker, but I can't get the described video track. So I figured I've been falling asleep to family guy with and it has described video i figured out with bluetooth headphones i could connect to my amazon fire tv in my bedroom and then i could the tivo remote does not have to hit the tivo so you could actually use an old tivo remote in the bedroom and i've now been able to get the described video tracks that way nice yeah so it's pretty funny and then i use my echo to turn the tv on and off <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> <laughs> it's technology incredible it can make us it's so amazing lazy. How about yourself, Jeff? Uh, you got a TiVo on your list for Prime Day? No, I don't. I like to just be surprised. I don't have a list going or anything like that. And I'd hate to be a internet traffic cop for your little apartment there with all that Bluetooth and everything <laughs> shooting around that room. But yeah, <laughs> it's it's exciting. And it starts at uh, noon your time, uh, Allison. I can't remember your name. <laughs> You got her time zone right, but you couldn't remember her name. Yeah, I was. Just... Wow. Well, she missed one show. Know, it's you know? it's <laughs> been a month. I know. Yeah, and I'm that forgettable. Clearly. Oh. So, Serena, what do you have for Prime? <laughs> yeah, what's her name? <laughs> No, actually, Amazon Prime Day is Hanukkah in July. That's right. Hanukkah in July. Christmas in July. Holidays of your choice in July. This is what it feels like for like, Christmas in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> it's hot as heck out. <laughs> I tell you what, I remember the first time it came out, and it was just a lot of junk. It seems like they're cleaning out their garage sale, you know, the stuff that never sells, because there was a lot of stuff on there that was nothing. All the good stuff just went. So I think they improved a little bit last year, and I hope this year they really step it up. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's supposed to be the biggest Prime Day ever. Oh, yeah. So why is everything always the biggest ever? Just once it's the smallest. We're very disappointed. It sucks. <laughs> well, they got to get rid of all those cracked TVs. Yeah. They get... <laughs> yeah. So if you want to get a cracked TV, you know. Uh... Well, you can't see the screen anyway. Exactly. So, it didn't know. matter. So Jeff, <laughs> now that you're back from the conference, what do you got coming up? 
uh, the rest of July. Well, I got to clean up a bunch of stuff business-wise because on the 6th of August, I'm already out of July, but the 6th of August is coming. I'll be spending three weeks in Napa. Napa. Ooh, Allison's we're going to have to get together. Uh, mm-hmm. I'll be up there on Beater Mountain. So the first week, I'm just volunteering some stuff there, and then we start woodworking for the blind, and that's where we're up at Enchanted Hills Camp, part of the Napa Lighthouse for the Blind and Visually Impaired. We'll be doing a beginner's wood shop for woodworkers, and then the advanced workshop. So should be a good time. Very cool. I expect this year you will make me a wooden TiVo with Bluetooth. <laughs> <laughs> I'll remember that. But the the first week, they actually have a music camp up there. And part of, there's another little section that blind ham radio operators can get their license and stuff. So kind of neat. You get to meet all these different people that are coming in and out of there. You need a license to be a ham operator? Oh, yeah. Certified, something like that. I don't know, you know, hey. It's a big deal. Yeah. When Canada invades, they'll <laughs> help us out. Yeah, just, Justin Trudeau is getting awfully mad. So, you mm-hmm. know, he'll, he can only he can only be sorry about that for so long you know (laughs) blind ham operators there's a phrase that i didn't think i'd ever hear hey hey allison do you remember one time at band camp (laughs) how could i forget Mm. (laughs) little american pie reference there anyhow allison what besides jeff invading your backyard uh what do you have coming up yeah i'm so excited i can't wait to meet jeff it's gonna be super fun um other than that just kind of getting everything situated and settled in the new house we just bought a condo which is really its own house separately basically we only share one wall so it's very cool and uh, i love it and that's basically gonna be my july hey brian what do you got going on oh you know it's so nice to be asked rather than just say it to just assume that you have nothing yeah (laughs) yeah so actually what did you do this weekend i did nothing and it was everything i thought it could be (laughs) so uh No, I think I just snorted laughed. I I can't believe that. That's an edit. You would get asked more if you would refer to us as co-hosts instead of (laughs) sub-hosts. Well, everything on this show is substandard. (laughs) So, I, you know, don't really have any big plans. I I plan to shop on Amazon Prime Day and then learn all my new devices and stuff. But no, no big plans for the summer. We just announced uh, Laugh for Sight for this year will be Monday, November 12th. Our hard to believe, our 13th year in New York City. Amazing. uh, just like Saturday Night Live, 13 years, funny for two. No. <laughs> no. So, and we're thrilled that Robert Klein, legendary comedian Robert Klein, will be back for his 12th year. And the only year is kind of funny. The only year he wasn't involved was the first year. And uh, then we're also very excited to have Francis Ellis from Barstool Sports. And uh, we're going to be booking more of the lineup, uh, you know, probably around August, September time frame. So, uh, you know, just teaching accessibility, learning more about accessibility, reading about tech hopefully putting together content for our next episode and of course screaming at the yankees on twitter when they're of not course, playing well which but has i won't been see a it a lot lately no <laughs> like i said so tension uh, relief tension breaker tension breaker so yeah i'm blind gator at twitter he's known as jeff at twitter she is hot for technology you're still number four still number hot four for technology yes and we are that blind tech show but only at blind tech show on the twitter and i guess for now we are out when we share what we see through each other's eyes eyes, we can then then begin begin to bridge the gap gap between between the limited limited expectations and the reality reality of blind abilities of blind abilities abilities. For more podcasts with a blindness perspective, check us out on the web at www.blindabilities.com, on Twitter at BlindAbilities, download our app from the App Store, BlindAbilities, that's two words, or send us an email at info at blindabilities.com. Thanks for listening.